It is 6.30. You're here. We're going to get started, okay? <laughs> Purpose for tonight's meeting is it's an open public meeting. No politicking, no finger pointing, none of that stuff if you read the bottom line on the announcement, okay? The whole purpose for tonight is to see if we can find out from the community what's bothering you, what the problems are, what the solutions are, what's going on, okay? We have, a, hopefully throughout the night, we'll have a diverse group of people coming in, and I'm gonna be like a moderator, but those of you who attended four years ago when I did this, all I do is start it off and then I pass the microphone over and I let you talk. One of the things you'll notice is that we're recording for the people who can't see it. It'll be put up on a website. Anybody can look at it, okay? So if you don't really want to be on the videotape, we just please ask you, just grab your chair and slide back a little bit and that way when he pans, he won't get you, okay? That's our only legal disclaimer with regards to it. It's an open public meeting. But if you don't feel comfortable, yeah, yeah. we're not passing out any legal disclaimers. Is that okay with everybody? Uh, we're running from 6.30 to 8 o'clock tonight. The last time we did these, it was 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And I do realize it's August and people are on vacation. And personally, I'm the type of guy when I set something up, we just do it. I don't care if two people showed up, we would have a discussion until the two people said, thank you, I want to go home now and the doors open, feel free, okay? This is, in point of fact, your meeting. I'm really glad Larry showed up on it, okay? Hopefully we'll get a good turnout. Uh, the one we had in September of 2014, we had about 125, 150 people actually were here, and some you know, came in, some left, so that's why it fluctuated. Uh, but I was really happy with the turnout. I was happy with the way it went, okay? So, uh, in full disclosure, Larry is running is for re-election as mayor. Okay, it's the only political comment being made. Full disclosure, <laughs> watch this. Larry and I are opposition. I'm the Republican. Okay, I was drafted. So that's perfectly fine. I just want you to be aware, of it. this is not a political function. Okay, from a practical sense. Milton is a, a candidate for council, as is Jeannie on the Republican side, okay? If somebody from the Democratic side shows up, we'll be happy to introduce them as a courtesy also. If somebody from the council shows up, we'll be happy to introduce them just so you know who's in there if you've got a question or something. Are those fair rules to get started with? Okay, we have two boards tonight. First board over here, we're gonna mark down questions, issues, topics, whatever you, that the group throws out, and we'll talk about it. This one over here, we're going to try to distill in the last 30 minutes or so of, of tonight's meeting into the top three, four, maybe even five if we have to get to, of topics. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get answers or progress on those items for the next meeting. And we'll pick another meeting several weeks down the line and hopefully we'll start the meeting off showing you the board. <laughs> as to what was still this meeting and try to answer questions if we can get it for you. Okay, it, it, we like the idea of progress. At the last meeting, that's exactly what we had. People asked questions. How, what about this? I, I don't have answers on a lot of this stuff. Okay, let's be serious, I don't. He's the mayor. He may not have answers to all this stuff, but let's be I fair about it. Okay. <laughs> But from a practical sense, we're going to put it up there and we'll try our best to get an answer for you on whatever it turns out to be, okay? So having said that, my five minutes uh, is, is up. Who's the first person in the audience that wants to basically tell us uh, what their concern is, issue? Good, bad, indifferent. So we're not looking at a slammer on this thing. We're not looking at a B session. We're looking at a... Let's talk openly about the borough, okay? So, who's got anything they want to talk about, concept-wise? I know you all came to listen and to improve your minds. Well, yeah, I can see something. <clears throat> my name is Larry for coming out with my information. And to try to save my marriage, I'm going to sneak out of here. <laughs> As a mayor, you know, you have a meeting almost every night of the week. I mean, it's nonstop. 
there's other issues in town that are up in the air. People think that uh, we're trying to do a lot of things that aren't proper. But everything we're doing is transparent. Everything is held up. My meetings, you have what two meetings a month, except that sometimes we have one month, and that means this Monday it'll be right here this room, and it's open to the public, sanitized, and everything else. <clears throat> when you uh, put stuff up on the board, that's fine. That's great. I like to know what everybody is uh, concerned about too. I've been on council since 2000. I guess that's 18 years. In 18 years, I have learned an awful lot. My wife has learned an awful lot too, and that's why I'm not going to hang around here. But I'd be very interested. I hope that you do write stuff on there. I'd like to know what it is and how it's going. But I got to get out. I hope you understand. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. That's fine and dandy. Okay, who else? Here you go, sir. Yes. To hold up right about four inches from your mouth, then I'll work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Patron, I think Larry Patron and the council for, for doing things, for trying to do things. I know things can be difficult, especially things like the round mill. Uh, so, I'm sorry, can you hold it a little closer? Uh, you know, it's, it, especially trying to develop the old tulips uh, plant, the rug mill, it, it was initially. Thank you for that. These things aren't easy, I know. The, municipal build, the new municipal building sounds great. Uh, I, I can't think of anything better than I, I have talked to a couple um, businessmen uh, in town. I'm not a businessman myself. I uh, don't know anything like that. Um, the, uh, and they are concerned, like a lot of the residents, about taxes. As an example, uh, we just lost two or three businesses on Mercer Street, uh, uh, Lane, Tire, and Auto, and Michael's Quick Printing, and I think there was another one in between. I'm not sure if they were there. Uh, and it was, it was pretty much for taxes. There's another fellow that uh, uh, I mentioned, and he says his taxes are, are really very high for him. I, uh, I know that's a difficult question. I'm not talking for myself. Uh, I, I can get into the, uh, the, uh, the PTR program. They don't pay me anything because sometimes I'm just not eligible because of certain things. So uh, I, I can deal with it. I know things cost money. What I really don't get very much is the places that don't ship in. For instance, a couple of years ago, I read an article about Princeton. I don't, I think that they, they're merged now, but it's a little and, and Correct. Sure. And uh, the article said, uh, I mentioned the fact that uh, Princeton University donated or contributed um, uh, about, not about, but as they said, a million dollars a year to offset taxes uh, in Princeton. I said Princeton now. Given that, the Princeton uh, Council, and I guess with some legal representation, asked Princeton for more, I mean, for, uh, Princeton University for more. A, a little leverage was they thought they were making a an undue amount of profits from products that they sold or distributed to research, such like that, they made profits for a tax-exempt uh, university. I didn't see it in the paper after that much anymore. I don't know if things were taken care of privately, if nothing came of it, if it was just a, a not possible or legally not possible. But I wonder, and I know Petty School is not on the same level as Princeton University, as far as money goes. Property, they're, they're substantial, but they both have one thing in common. They're, they're, they're very successful, both of them, and affluent. Is, is, is it possible to get a significant amount of money from Petty School to contribute like Princeton University contributes to maybe over taxes for everybody, rather than losing businesses. Uh, um, uh, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. It, it just seems it, it, it's time for uh, the regular uh, uh, residents to stop bearing the complete burden and the regular businesses. 
where I know that they are legally that legally don't have to do it. I know they donate a, a few thousand dollars to the fire department um, or the first aid squad, but it's a pittance, let's face it. Uh, they get they get certain perks that their own development for schools, they buy property on South Main Street, and then that's not taxable as well. I, I, I think that is stopped the toll that that has. I, I would at least suggest that we ask them or meet with them uh, at, to, to see if anything uh, if substantial can come out of it, or, or if there's a legal way to approach it. Other than that, that's all I got to say. I think uh, someone that, that, that is doing quite well uh, for many years uh, and not really contributing at all, whether it's legal or not, it, it doesn't seem fair to me. Cool. Thank you. I, I'm going to try to answer some of the points that were brought up, and, and I may get a few facts wrong, but I'm pretty much right in the ballpark on Let's take two things separate. Let's take Heightstown and separate it from Princeton. Okay? The first thing I'm going to say is, with regards to Heights Town, one of the things that we as residents and taxpayers in the borough have to understand is that the percentage of non-taxed property or tax-exempt property in the borough has constantly gone up, and I believe Larry may know it off the top of his head, I think it's 36 to 38 percent. 32 percent. 32 okay? What that means is 32% of the assessed value of Heights Town is tax exempt. All right, so that means the rest of us are carrying the weight for those. Now, Petty makes up part of it. The churches make up part, a lot of others do. According to the state of New Jersey tax site, when I last looked at it, there were 18 tax exempt properties, religious tax exempt properties, in Heights Town, East Windsor. 14 of the 18 were in Heights Town. I don't know where they all are, but I'm just telling you, they're here. One of the problems that we face as a borough is the historical evolution of the borough started out as a zone, business zone, center of the town concept, way back when. That's why the post office is here. That's why a lot of the stuff grew up. Around us, which is East Windsor now, was farmland, basically. And then they grew up and they incorporated. But the problem is, the structure for a community is located generally where? In Heightstown. And a lot of that structure is, in point of fact, tax exempt for religious, for educational reasons, things of that nature, okay? We have to address that one way or the other. We cannot allow that slope to go from 22 to 26 to 28 to 32 percent to keep going. They can't go unchecked from practical sense. So taxes is definitely something that has to be discussed. Uh, how we go about it is a great, great concept. Now, Petty. Last I knew, Petty donates about fifty thousand dollars a year to the. Uh, engine company number one. Not petty, you know, not poultry. It's a good piece of change. But for petty, I got it. Okay? Could they do more? The answer is yes, in my opinion. Okay? I go back to your question of Princeton Borough, Princeton Township. A couple of facts that you, you missed out on because you didn't know probably about it is Princeton University was not sued by the borough or the township of Princeton. Princeton University was sued by four taxpayers in Princeton. They sued the borough, the township, and the university. And their position was, by the municipality giving Princeton tax-exempt status on all their property without challenging it, it was a violation of their rights as property payers, etc. Everybody laughed when the lawsuit was filed about six years ago. It was four property owners taking on Princeton University and the two municipalities. What happened was in Superior Court, six motions in a row against Princeton University, the ruling. And what it finally wound up being was that you cannot say all this property is tax exempt. 
You cannot do what you're doing over there, especially, for example, in the eateries and the clubs that they have and the things of that nature, because they charge dues and they charge this and they charge that. So what happened was, after the last ruling went against Princeton University, before it went to trial, there was an out-of-court settlement. Princeton University, as you say, pays $1 million to the new structure, municipality. It's the township of Princeton, which includes the borough. It merges into one now, called Princeton, okay? And what happened was there was a $8 million fund paid by Princeton and an additional several million dollars. And the fund is being used to help offset taxpayers who are having a problem with their tax bill, to be quite honest. Low income people can't make the tax, there's a fund now that they can get money from, okay? And Princeton has agreed to step up and take the one million into a higher. So the question that we ask is, is exactly that. If it worked for Princeton University case, why doesn't it work here? Why doesn't it work in Lawrenceville? Why doesn't it work wherever? Good question. And I think it's something that needs to be pursued, okay? But I, it, this is not a let's hammer petty or anything else. Good point, good question. Everybody understand a little bit better of, of what he's talking about. My concern is more about the tax exempt status, property wise, portion wise, of Heights Town. Okay? And that affects our tax bill from a practical sense. Now, you are correct. Princeton University has a multi billion dollar endowment. <laughs> That's cash sitting in investments that they can do what they want with. Petty, I think the last, if Scott Coster was here, he'd go right off the top of his head. He's supposed to be here. But anyhow, I believe Petty Universe, a Petty, has about 325, 350 million dollars in their endowment. 200 million dollars of which I believe came from, from Ambassador Annenbaum. Okay? Annenberg, whatever his name was. Okay? And, and he was the guy from Ironman Hammer that, that donated because he went to the school. And that's great. But some of the caveats that are in that endowment require, Prince, uh, require Petty to actually help out the community. And, and I believe Petty is like a business, like any other business. If you put pressure on them, they're going to respond, they're going to help. If you don't put pressure on them, their board of trustees and their finance people are gonna go, why do we need to spend another $200,000 we can use it somewhere else. So that's an issue probably for another day. It is a critical issue for us, okay, the tax side. And, and at some point we can probably have a night debate, okay, on one side, the people that, that think, I'm always hearing Petty's a great resident of the borough, communicates and helps, and, and they do. They bring a lot to the table. I think you'd agree, right, Larry? Me, they don't bring enough. I'm sorry. I look at it from a businessman standpoint, I go wrong, okay? I go wrong. We bought a very large hook and ladder years ago, which was about a million dollar investment for the Heightstown Fire Department. And the major justification at the meetings that I attended were the high buildings and the dormitories over in Petty to get the ladder up in there. And originally, they did not donate much to that at all. Johnny Archer was, I think, the chief at the time. Johnny went over and had a conversation with him and pointed out what the endowment gift had said about pledging because Johnny had sent a letter to, to the Amber, and it, Annenberg. Annenberg, thank you. Annenberg Foundation, they came back and said, hey, this is Heights Town. We, we gave them a lot of money and Petty, they're supposed to help you guys out. So he went over and talked to them and they wrote out a nice check to help. Didn't pay half of it, but they, up the ante. So I believe there's ways of doing it. But there's other people, other entities in the borough that you gotta give some consideration to. Do you know that according to the tax, New Jersey State tax rule uh, uh, site, approximately 50% of the assessed value of the, high, of the East Windsor Regional School District is located where? Heights Town. We run, what, 17% or something of, of the school budget, according to the state, we're responsible for. 15.6. 15.6, 15 
That's what I love having him here for. <laughs> I'm Come on. I'm close, right? Okay. 15.16 versus 17. I'll you give it either way. I, 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 I don't care. Okay. Here's the point. Since Janice Murnoff has been mayor of East Windsor, they have not built a new school anywhere in the damn system. Everywhere around us, they've built new schools. They've built primary schools, middle schools, high schools. We don't build them. Because if they build them, they have to be built where? In East Windsor, we don't have any room in Hightstown. Okay? So, you know, you got to sit back and say, we are 1.1 square mile of paradise, or whatever you want to call it. Depends on who you're talking to. Okay? But we are carrying the lion's share of the greater community's financial burden. And that just is not right. So to me, if you're gonna, if you're gonna look at taxes, to get taxes down from a municipal standpoint side, you're gonna have to look at all the entities that fall into that tax exempt category. I was in a meeting one time about two years ago or so, a tax meeting, Larry was, was was holding up there, and we talked about it. I, I stood up and I asked a dumb question. I had, had gotten the tax information from the state, and I asked, please explain to me how this parcel, and he said, I don't know what the hell a parcel is, and who would have expected him to? I said, it is nine and a half acres of Petty Lake, owned by Petty School, is tax exempt. <laughs> please explain to me the religious, the educational, the, the, the ba basis for that, that one, just that one buck. And, and obviously it's a sucker question because who the hell knows the answer right away. You gotta research it. But the question to me is that. They present tax exempt certifications. I believe it's every January, they gotta do it every year, they have to. And our tax assessor or tax collector has to certify it and, and do it. And I think we need to change the process. I think we don't rubber stamp things. Well, Penny Lake is Green Acres. Green Acres. It's oh. not Penny, it's, not it's Green Acres. Okay, but it's tax exempt. It, it's tax exempt. So once again, my, my question basically comes back to is there's an assessed value by the state on there, a price value, okay, or assessed value, what they call it, and it goes into the big formula, and it's tax exempt. Okay, okay. Other than taxes, what else you people got going? Come on, it's got to be something else. That's, come on. No, shot in a minute. I was going to say robocalling. No, just, <laughs> just to follow up on the taxes, the borough, the borough does have a history and has in the past gone after tax exempt properties for to pay their, their fair share. The Presbyterian Homes in Meadow Lakes many years ago was sued by the borough because of their tax exempt status. And because of that lawsuit now pays, I think this last year is about $475,000 a year in property taxes, really just on the seven buildings and Meadow, out of the 50 buildings at Meadow Lakes that are in Heightstown. So the borough does have a history of going after tax exempt properties. Whether any of that is can be attributed to Petty, it's possible. But like I said, we have done that in the past and been successful. So it is something that we could consider going forward in the future. Thanks, and, and unfortunately, your, your position is with the federal housing development. Right. And they're tax exempt. They're tax exempt, but they make a payment. That's that's the point I'm making. There's the federal government who has the ultimate eminent domain, okay, who has decided that you know they understand they are a burden to the community and they pay make a payment to the, the borough, okay, on behalf of of the tax that we're missing out on, okay? And I believe they adjust that periodically. In 2017 and again in 2018, we'll be contributing to the borough about 50% more than the petty school does. Your federal taxes at work. <laughs> so we're taking it on the federal side, we're, we're giving it back here on the local side. That's fine. So I, I, I think the issue of taxes from a property tax standpoint, we, we, we've thrown out one. You follow what I'm saying? It, we can cover it again later. We're gonna look at some of the details, like I said to you, uh, on the next meeting. Hopefully, we'll have taxes on there at the end of the night, and then we'll, we'll have some facts, figures for you, 
uh, that will be accurate and the latest and greatest and we'll have copies of the doc documents in the back for you to verify who cares. You know, but we'll have the documentation for you. And it's important for you to understand. But to me, the issue is the growth of the tax-exempt properties in the borough. And we got to stop it. The, 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 the state has to come in years ago, uh, three, four years ago, the council sent a letter to the governor and basically said, it was four years ago because it was an election law or something, sent, sent a letter to the governor's office saying, hey, we need some help because we're over 30% of our assessed value is tax exempt and, and relying upon your exemptions, your, your state law. So why don't you guys step in? My position on it has always been that constitutes an uh, unfunded mandate. Do you know what an unfunded mandate is? I see them every day. There you go. Unfunded mandate <laughs> is, is when the legislation, legislators, <clears throat> state level, federal level, whatever, put a requirement in that costs money and they don't put any money in to handle it. So they now give you a job to do that has a bill to it, but they don't give you the money. And they're supposed to be addressing unfunded mandates. You got to hold their feet to the fire like anything else. Okay, uh, Scott, did you have anything other than taxes and petty? Oh, you, you were talking about roll calls. Roll call. Uh, uh, do me a favor. Here you go. What what do we talk about with robo calls? I don't know if you mean borough robo calls or just national robo calls. I was talking about national robo calls, and to me, it's. It's on. It's the one thing that's on everybody's mind across every jurisdiction, Heightstown and then outside. I was being a little cute when I said that. Obviously, we'll take the microphone but away. Listen to one hundred one point five. That is the number one thing that everybody has on their minds. Um, How about something from Heightstown? We can do something. Something from Heightstown. Seriously, I think there's a homeless situation in downtown Heightstown. And uh, I say downtown Heightstown, I don't care where you live. I don't care whether it's East Windsor, I don't care whether it's Robbinsville, I, I don't care whether it's Heightstown, I'm talking about homeless in particular. I, 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 don't, I think right now we actually have the seeds in Heightstown of a greater problem. And I personally have been to the police department about this and they say, there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, within the last few weeks, I've been there. And I've, I've no, I've, I'm aware of some of the elected officials in Heightstown, their position on the matter. And that is, either we don't have a problem, or there's nothing we can do about it. I've been to downtown Heightstown, that organization, and they don't want to touch it. And I think it's a shame that intelligent people who claim that they can accomplish great things can't put their minds together. There's other organizations that I'm aware of who have considered and entertained the problem here in Heightstown. And they haven't been able to accomplish anything or they say there's nothing we can do about it. And so I was gonna bring the subject up, I'm still gonna bring it up uh, soon at a borough council meeting. But here we are, there's nothing like preempting a borough council meeting if we can accomplish something here. I'd rather accomplish it here because I'm not crazy about it ever being accomplished at the elected official level in Heightstown, I'm sorry to say. Cool. Okay, now that we've had uh, that uh, comment uh, forwarded, uh, anything you've got to say, you know, it's gotta be solid, okay? Hi, I've only lived in Heightstown about 11 years now, and I think when we first moved here, you did have to walk bridge across the lake at the time, and it, then naturally the flooding came and it disappeared. Anyway, we're going to spend 360000 I know it's it's not our money, I know it's a grant money, for a bridge that, what's it used for, to stand there and look at the lake? It just doesn't make sense. If you try to walk down Main Street on your way to ShopRite, and you walk on those sidewalks, half the sidewalks are broken. They're raised with roots of trees underneath them. If you're not looking down when you're walking, you're gonna trip and, and fall down. I mean, if you want to spend some money, fix the sidewalks in this town, for crying out loud. 
359 for a bridge that oh, a couple of people are going to stand on and look at the water? It doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, how many people have a concern about the bridge? Either for, against, or what's your just, issue? No, I'm just concerned about there's been, how long has it been closed down? Okay. And anybody still nothing, anybody else on the bridge? Nothing. Please. It's not in the parents, anyway. No, got it. Briefly. It's a very narrow sidewalk on the waterfall side between there and the traffic. Right. Extremely narrow. You get a bicycle and two people walking. Uh -huh. You can end up out in the gutter and easily enough. All right, so, so I think we can call it a safety issue as well as a artistic or aesthetic, you know, issue, which is fine with me. Okay. Well, well, let's backtrack a little bit. One of the problems was the bridge was always nice when it was there. Let's just call it the way it was. For structural reasons and other issues, it, it got damaged and needed to be replaced. Sure, Tony, shut up. Yeah, okay. So what happened was a committee was established originally, and it was a fundraiser. And the goal originally was $85,000. We were going to raise by the community. We had fundraisers. I was involved in it. A lot of people were involved in it. The Tavern on the Lake was. The Heightstone Diner was. Other people were. Larry was. You know what I'm saying? Community. We raised the $85,000. Some nice person, don't know who it was, I just mentioned someone, leave them anonymous, had put a $20,000 pledge in there, which basically said, if you reach $20,000 on this, I'll double it to $40,000 for you. And that gave us the impetus to do it. We did it. We got the $85,000. It was high five. Everybody was pumped. They went out. They bought these <coughs> very beautiful medallions that were made for the bridge. And they had an artistic look on them, the whole nine yards. And then what happened was there was a survey that needed to get done on the dam itself. And as I recall, we had this discussion during a meeting. For whatever reason, the bridge, uh, the, the bridge committee paid for that. And it should have been a borough issue. And a borough stepped up and said, you know, you're right. We should have paid for that, not, not the committee. Anyhow, what happened was because of the American with Disabilities Act and some lawsuits that were hanging over about the bridge from way back when, because the bridge had been removed, to restore it had to include full compliance with ADA, American with Disabilities Act. Okay? As I recall the story, and I could be wrong, there was a person from Florida who came up and visited and couldn't get on the bridge and was very upset and threatened an ADA lawsuit. They were in a wheelchair. And the borough had told them at that point, we're going to address it, we'll put a ramp, we'll do something. Lo and behold, three years go by, a person from Florida shows back up again in Heightstown. There is no ramp, there is no whatever. The person threatens the ADA lawsuit all over again, does some action on it. Okay? Fine. As I recall, we started at 85000 At one point, there was, a, there was a resolution passed by the borough council about four years ago, if I remember correctly, to allocate $206,000 of borough money for it. How I remember it, okay? And we'll get the facts for you for the next meeting. The State Department of Transportation was approached, and I remember reading in the paper that the State Department of Transportation had come up with about a $400,000 for it. So I sit back and I look at it and I go, 85,000, 206,000, 400,000, we're getting up to about a million dollar bridge. And, and the question is what? Okay. I mean, have nothing. No, okay, that's fine. But I know that the council's been pushing the issue of the bridge and stuff, and I remember a thing. The bridge I, will be awarded Monday. There you go. The bridge will be awarded on Monday, and I know they've been working with it, you know what I'm saying? So. But your question is well taken. Two questions. A, we don't have a bridge, why? And they've explained it because of the systems behind it and everything else. And my question back also is, okay, we're going to award the bridge on Monday. So I would strongly suggest you go to the council meeting on Monday and you take a look at what the price tag is. 418. On, I'm sorry? 418. 418,000 for the bridge. Uh, does that include the dam? Uh, Structure, you know, the repair to the dam, the the dam area itself. Okay. So, okay. Is there a cap on that for 18? 
That's going one, once, one. going twice. Where does it go to 618? No, there is no cap on that. That's the initial. We're going to do this to, to move it along. Maybe I can give you some stuff here. Go ahead. One second. In the state of New Jersey, you have county grants, and you have uh, state grants, then you have federal grants. All right. When you go to a federal grant, which that is a federal grant, it is checked by the DOT. So you put it all together, and DOT reviews it. DOT comes back half a dozen times and says they don't like it, and they make changes to it. That is reviewed by the federal government. The federal government, once again, sends it back to DOT. DOT, of course, sends it back to Hightown. Hightown engineer goes over it again. We have three architects and four engineers checking this bridge out. Now, this ain't the biggest waste of money in the world, but that's why the, the cost keeps going up and up and up. <clears throat> Being a bridge in New Jersey, and I, I'm sure you people read this in the paper, there was a statement made uh, four years ago that there's not a safe bridge in New Jersey. <laughs> well, when you want to build a bridge in New Jersey, you've got big problems. They call that a bridge. I call a bridge when the car goes over. Right. That's a walk That's a walk bridge. 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 Walk bridge yeah. All right. Uh, then the DOT gets involved and tells you all those different things. Then you got the EPA gets involved and the DEP gets involved, right? DEP came to me and said, uh, we're taking away too much flood surface when we put the uh, handicap stuff in there. So I had to go out, went to Trenton three or four times with it, and finally I said to the guy, listen, let's sit here and talk man to man. Don't tell me what I can't do. Tell me what I can do to get it done. About an hour and a half later, banging on the desk and everything else, he finally told me what we had to do to get it done. And it's done. it'll be awarded one day. It took seven years. And there's supposed to be a press release out. Did you read Sam Hunter's? No, I didn't. I've been watching the papers, but I haven't seen it. There's supposed to be a press release out. Again, no, no press comes to the paper, I mean, to the meetings. And when you send a press release in, they don't even print it. So that's another problem. The bridge will be awarded Monday. It comes out, I think, $418,000. I'm pretty close to that number. And uh, the money that you were talking about, the 80000 that was donated by the public, was used for uh, engineering fees and architectural fees. I think there was, and some that stabilization. There was some stabilization required on there. Well, first they said that the bridge was going to go from Structure to structure. Right. Right? And uh, the state came back, DOT came back and said, no, no, no. It's got to go over there. A whole new bridge. Well, when you do a whole new bridge, you got to do a whole new application. But uh, it worked out. It took a lot. And it is a federal grant. So it's not a matching grant. It's a federal grant. It's your tax dollar number. Is there a time frame on when that's supposed to be complete? Um, Complete? Yeah. No, I don't know. I Isn't think it's going to start this spring. I don't, I don't think they're going to start this winter. Do they have any models or sketches? Or yes, they do. They have all the complete layout. The medallions are, are still waiting. Yeah. The medallions and, were all paid for. They were like five grand that a piece. Part of the and, and, no, that was a separate thing that they had done. The medallions were, uh -huh. were separate. And they were don't, each one was donated by someone. And that's why the medallions were done. Because they were paid for and they were okay. Uh, that bridge went out to bid, and the bids came back and they fell into the into the ballpark where they belong, and it'll be awarded now. And then once it's awarded, a paperwork has to go back to DOT to make sure that the guy who is going to do the work is, is qualified. Well, <laughs> so when's the projected start? I have one question. question. Okay. Don't know if right. you're from Heightstown or not. I don't really care. You're in the group. You hear from me. My calculations, 418 plus 85,000, my calculations, we're talking half a million dollar bridge, from all practical sense. Our, who in this room would, would vote not to spend a half a million dollars for that damn bridge? Who would say, I don't care it's a half a million, I want to see it because it's aesthetic? Well, it's not our it's No, I, I, I grant. It, it, it's not. Yeah, but here's my problem with grants. Federal grants are still taxpayer money. Right. It may not be your money, it's taxpayer money. Your taxpayers, and you know, ultimately it goes. 
My question is, I don't care who's buying me a Maserati. If I don't need a damn Maserati, I need a Ford to get around, I want a Ford. If somebody's stupid enough to give me a Maserati, that doesn't mean I should necessarily take it. You follow what I'm saying? So to me, there's a question about whether or not we should even deal with it. And that's a practical thing, and I, good news, attend Monday, there was a public comment section up front, there's a public comment section at the end. They're restricted to three minutes each, but so be it. You can at least stand up and say you're for it, you're against it, you, you're neutral. Go, be heard. See what happens when, when they hear. But to me, half a million or more for that damn bridge makes no sense whatsoever. I would prefer to do something else downtown to improve the downtown area. Fixing it originally seven years ago, as you said, made sense. It wasn't going to cost taxpayers, not meant any taxpayer, anything. It was being raised by the community. That was prior to the ADA. Yep. In fact, the ADA was going to help us. Well, they, the, after they passed the ADA law, but ADA when, when they said it wasn't a repair, it was a replacement, and the ADA had to be no, right. it triggered. Prior to the act. No, ADA has been around for a long, long yeah. time. It wasn't mandatory. No. So, uh, okay. I got it. What I'm saying, though, is one of the things I think you need to really look at, I have not seen it, so it's my projection, okay? Take a look at what the each side of this bridge is going to do to the park and the parking lot, because to be ADA uh, compliant, it's going to have to have ramps, it's going to have to have a lot of things on it, which is going to take away the green area that you have and stuff. I don't know, but take a look at it and just basically say, I know what I got an eyesore right now, okay? I got it. What if we did not put the bridge back, okay? What if we did something else? My concern is spend a half a million dollars of whoever's money, okay? Take another year or two to get it on there. We could put a little bucket on there and say, donate to the bridge, <laughs> you know, going forward. That'd be fine. I see it as a safety issue from one reason only. You're 100% correct. The sidewalk is a very, very thin sidewalk there. But that is a DOT problem. There are federal standards for the width of a sidewalk over a bridge, okay? And I don't know. I did not go look at it, but I'm quite sure we can have an engineer to take a look at it. When they rebuilt that bridge after the hurricane, flooded up. They were supposed to take that into consideration, but what they didn't do is they didn't widen the bridge for the new standards. They kept it at the old one for the old road, even though they widened the road up more. Do you follow what I'm saying? So more power to them. All right, so we got a bridge up there. Cool. All right. I'm sorry we have to make an announcement, which is you guys showed up and didn't hear the original announcement. It's being recorded if you don't want your face on the recording. You can sit in the back and we won't turn the camera towards you. But if you sit there, if life is good, take it away. Larry, thank you for showing. Thank you. Right. Okay. So, so my, my name thank is. You thank you for the time, JP. Thank you. It's an open public meeting. My name is Invite your friends. <laughs> Tell <the> people. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Please. Uh, my name is Eamon. I've lived in Ice Town for two years. For two years, uh, I have a, a one-year-old, and I, now this is my first first setting. And I, I have the first question I had was, what is the problem that you, you the, the whole thing? Like, so you vaguely said the the problem, and I'd like to know what that is. Okay, you missed the introduction on here, and let me explain it. We're having an open public meeting where anyone can talk about anything in the borough, good or bad, okay? Anything that you want to get some additional information for. We're talking as what, I'm sorry, I come from New England. We had town hall meetings in New England. They're the old fashioned ones from New England. This, this isn't an attack. I, I'd like to know what the problem is. The one we were just talking yeah, about? Yeah, the well, one we were just talking about with the bridge. No, no, no. You, when you were speaking about the, the homeless oh. people in town. Um, you when you speak about the homeless people in town, you said the problem. Um, I'm just wondering what the problem 
is? Like what, when you say the problem, what are you describing? Because it seems like I should know what that is when you say the problem, or everyone in here should know what it is. And I, I'm interested to hear what the problem is. Uh, one second, you can have a microphone. The word homeless, I would hope, would convey pretty much what I was talking about or referring to. I'm not attempting to be too specific right this second. Well, could what, you say whether it's one person or a dozen? I think that's your concern, correct? No, my, my question is what it, so I understand homelessness. It, it's, it's, it's bad, and, and, I, and I understand what you're saying. What is the problem? What is the problem? Because the, you seem to address, so it's. What is the problem that causes homelessness? Hey, are you asking in general or? Specific? No, I'm asking you what, because obviously I live in town, and it, it, there is this problem that exists in the town in which my wife and child reside in. So I'd like to know what that problem is without being vague without worrying about how you say it and what you say and what is the problem so that I know what the problem is. Well, I, I didn't intend to totally uncover the problem tonight. I just wanted to. Is it a drug problem? You're close. You're is very it, close. So why are we playing this game? Well, there are, some, there are, some, there is. Is, there, there are certain people Included in this problem, who have the problem, and I'm trying to be courteous to them as well. And that's where I was coming from when I was trying to be a little bit covert. Um, it, I think it's. I think if you just drive through the center of Heights Town, you'll see what I'm talking about. And I think that should be enough said. If you, you, one trip through downtown Heights Town may not reveal it, multiple trips I think will show it. I don't think it's a widespread problem, but. Nevertheless, it exists. Are you referring to a at least one person in the borough who sleeps on the streets or in the sidewalks or on yeah. public yeah. property? Are yeah. you referring yes. to okay. yes. that would so constitute you're, you're a talking problem. to a specific uh, about a specific individual. This is not well, a widespread problem. Then. No, I, I never I don't think I See, I gave you the impression that it was a widespread no, problem, you, but you're correct. The problem was he, his issue was there's at least one person in the borough who's homeless, who's living on the streets. He has brought it to the police attention and others about it, and they haven't done anything about it. That's why he raised it here tonight. Is that correct, Scott? Yeah, and I'm at, and I'm at the point about the issue where I am, I will be bringing pressure to the subject, pressure to individuals who should be responsible for it. Um, I, know, I don't want to get down into the weeds about it. I know the individual has some issues and is responsible for himself, but there's a greater humanitarian way of approaching this that everybody seems to just be shrugging. And we don't have any experience in how to deal with it in Heights Town. And I don't believe we ever have broadly dealt with it, I think it's time. I, I don't see any problem with that. What, where were you? Can I reverse this on you? Where, what are you trying to get at? So at least the way that I took it there is the homelessness, and then there is this other, the problem. And I didn't put the two together. So what you're saying is that the problem is the homelessness, and the problem is you're specifying the individual. Uh, I don't want to have to get this again. semantics. Um, I think I think there's a there's there's at least one person who sleeps downtown at night um, and does it on public property and sometimes on private property that's adjacent to downtown and um, it it looks terrible. It is terrible for him. Um, it's not everybody who everybody who frequents downtown is aware of it, and we're all stepping over it. So I don't want to step over it anymore. I brought the subject up. Maybe it was practice for when I bring it up publicly at the next meeting, and I'm on the record about it officially, and that's where I'm in.
So you can join me on it if it's part of your. I think that talking about a solution for if we have one individual living homeless in our town is a conversation to be had. Um, my concern with the way that you have phrased it, and it, it still seems to me, and I guess we'll address this in the township meetings, you're beating around the bush, and I'm just not that kind of guy. I want to know what the problem is so we can solve it. Um, yeah, somebody who passes out on the street, on the sidewalk, who doesn't want any help, who um, is having a substance abuse problem, who um, um, he, he has his own personal issues, and, to us, and this is where we are, our brother's keepers. Uh, additionally, a question for sure. as well. Uh, just to, to, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about the rug or the, the drug What well, you know, I, when I was moving into town, I saw it, and the I almost didn't move into Heights Town because of the drug Um, You know, it, it, it seems to me that, and I, I don't know, I mean, I, I guess it's a laughing matter because I've, I've nicknamed it, but how long have we been waiting for something to happen? 25 years. 25 years. I mean, what is going on? Why are we spending $500,000 on a bridge? I mean, do we have the decision as to what we can do with that $500,000? No, I, I, fine. It, was, are you ready? Is that your issue? Well, no, no. I'm just, I'm just asking you while I have the floor is when we have the $500,000 that we're going to spend on a bridge, do we have the ability to reallocate? Or is it for the bridge? Okay, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is compartmentalize what your issues are so we can answer them intelligently. The answer to your last question first is no. There are federal grants through the state, okay? What happens is the state issues the grant from the DOT, they get the money from the Federal Highway Administration, okay? okay. So we'll take that the money goes for the bridge or it goes away. It goes back into the Federal Highway funds, okay? The, the, the rug mill is a totally different animal, okay? And I'll give you a quick synopsis of the rug mill. I have to because we don't have all night for this thing. Okay? No, not really. I, anybody can have it. I don't. Does anyone need me to have a mic? Thank you. Okay, I just do this so I can pass the people. Reality of the situation is for over 25 years, ever since they Phillips closed down the rug mill on Bank Street, they used to make light bulbs in the forest and lights there about 25, 30 years ago. All right? They closed down, they moved out. It's been abandoned. There's been projects proposed off and on for the 25 year period of time. <clears throat> the latest and greatest one will be, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mitch, were you at the planning board meeting on Monday? Were you at the planning board yeah. meeting? Yeah, it was approved. Did they approve phase one? Go. Phase one or the whole thing? Phase one. Ready phase one. Go. Okay. The rug mill has been broken into several phases. Phase one has been approved officially by the Planning and Zoning Board as of Monday, okay? Uh, did you record it, Mitch? I've got this thing about transparency, so I've contracted with this gentleman and his company to actually record these meetings and put them online so when you get a chance, you can go up online and you can pull it down and watch the whole meeting at two o'clock in the morning for insomnia purposes or whatever, feel free. Okay, so you know what's actually happening. Originally, the current developer was proposing the following. They were going to build townhomes on Cadden Street and Bank Street right on the corner, where the blue building is, the warehouse. The blue portion would be torn down, they would put condos up on there. Or actually townhomes is the way it originally was proposed. Across the little stream, they were going to build a three-story parking garage. So they were going to rehab the brick buildings that were there into apartments. They were going to take the concrete building that was up front and turn it into retail stores. They were then going to take over the firehouse and they were going to keep the top up here as a community center and they were going to turn the bottom into retail space. In exchange, for this building and the borough hall complex next door. They were going to build the borough. 
a new borough hall complex, a new fire department, a new police station. All of it was going to be on Bank Street. That was the original proposal. Uh, it was recorded by you, I think, Mitch, and it's on, on YouTube or something like that. You can, you can search YouTube and you'll get it, okay? Fast forward, they come back and have a tweaking of the project, just a tweak. And in the tweaking that they have, what they proposed was no parking garage. They proposed to break it into phases now, instead of a complete project going from Academy Street down to North Main Street. And they proposed, and this is the best one for you people who've been around for a while, it's gonna drive you crazy. We can't build or rehab the Borough Hall complex because it's in a floodplain. How many people heard that, understood that? That's why we can't do it. Well, we were just told in the second revision to this plan that they are going to take where the borough hall is right now and the parking lot next to it, they're going to dig out that area and put a subterranean garage in the flood area. So somehow it's no longer a flood zone. Okay? I'm just telling you what the plan is. They're then going to put grass on the top of it and make a little park type deal. The issue with the fire station, borough hall, complex, etc., is gone. It was too costly for the development. So yeah, what they decided too costly for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, on, on the original plan, I know. that was free. No, no, that's what I'm saying. The, on the original plan, that was original free. plan. That sounded good. That was free. As a matter of fact, that's why I understood it. But okay. then I kept see, you gotta, of gotta come to these open yeah, meetings and find out what's going on. Walked over. Right. You know so what, what happens now is that. They're, they've got phase one, phase two, possibly phase three. Phase one is you can just go to the, the creek, the little creek that's on Academy Street. That's like the line of demarcations, okay, where the little bridge goes over it, the walking bridge between the buildings. That up to Academy Street is phase one. They are going to put 36 or 38 condos in that blue area. Do, do we know the actual number? You're right. Yeah. There's 116 rental. Oh, okay, so it's 36 or 38. The reason I say that is the application says 36. The, the information from the planning board said 38. So 36, 38, whatever. They were originally going to be sold townhomes. They have metamorphosed into, retail, uh, into rental units. Okay? The first phase in the, in the brick building, and they tore down one of the buildings in the back area, they're gonna build another one back there, is 100 and, how many units? All, all together, it built out, would be 266 rental units. No, in phase one, it's 180 something. 110. No, 100, the 106, 106, 110 or 160 units in phase one. All right, so the, the brick building is gonna be, phase one, let's call it what it is. Phase one is nothing but rental units. And you're going to take 110, 118, whatever the heck it is, and you add in the 36 or the 38, and around 160 units you're going to wind up with that are going to be rental units in the borough. Now, here's the kicker. Everyone has heard about the new borough complex. You mentioned it earlier, sir. All right, the, the borough complex, they're going to take oh, yeah. over the YMCA. Yeah, 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 right. They're going to make the new borough hall. The plan was submitted, and I went to the meeting. We recorded it, I believe, and it just drove me absolutely nuts for the following reason. They had an executive session before the open meeting to talk about a contract to buy the YMCA. They came out of the executive session they went into the public session. They had a presentation about what they're going to do with the YMCA, and it turned out to be a $7.5 million project. That's without the police station. No, 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 that's with the police oh, that's, station. I understand it was eight. $7.5 million with the police station. But that's phase two, okay? We don't have to build a police station. It's $2.5 million for the police station. So we take the two and a half million dollars out of the police station and it costs five million dollars to build 
to buy and build the new borough hall at the YMCA. I was under the impression that, that they not include the $700,000 that we paid for the property, which to my understanding is $100,000 more than... Well, during the presentation, they came out and said we hired a commercial realtor uh, appraiser to go in and tell us what it was worth, and they actually agreed to pay $148,000 more than what the appraiser said it was worth. I stood up and I said, I just don't understand that. We paid a professional taxpayer money. We oh, paid for tax free right, right. years. They should have just gave us the building well, and let us and, and, and let where, us preserve. Where were you that night that I was arguing the same points? And they looked at me like I had two heads. Okay, but anyhow. <coughs> I argued the same thing, okay? Long and the short of it is here's the problem. They've gone to contract, they had closing, Scott, is that correct? They just had closing on, on the buyer. So they've actually bought the building now, okay? So that's another project we're stuck with. You're going to love it. It gets better. That's why here. It we gets, got a lot of these projects. It, it gets better. Gets and here's the issue. The better part of it is the following. They, they, in the presentation, they said, we're getting $2 million. How are we going to pay for the $5 million borough hall, the YMCA? I'm sure it's paid. No, you're going to love it. Of the $5 million, we're getting $2 million from the borough, uh, from the insurance company for the borough hall complex. Got it. They're getting a $1 million to sell the property that the borough hall complex next door is on to the developer. The developer doesn't have to buy the property. It's in phase two. So if the developer doesn't exercise phase two, the developer does not have to buy the property. But we're on the hook for all $5 million right now. So we got $2 million in the bank, supposedly, from the insurance money. And we're going to fund $2 million from a bonding standpoint. Well, actually, what they're saying is they're going to they're going to bond three million. I think there was bonding ordinance coming out, uh, like three million dollars for the project, of which a million will be coming from from developer. Okay, got it. Got it. Here's the problem: we're buying about a hundred and forty year old building, from what I understand, that has major structural issues, as well as we're going to have to gut most of it and put in new electrical, new plumbing, whatever. ADA accessible and all the rest of that stuff. The plans show all that stuff. And, and look, I've got a problem. I own businesses and I run businesses. I got to make payroll. <laughs> I got to make sense. So from a practical sense, when you start talking to me about five hundred thousand dollars for a bridge, when you start talking to me about five million dollars to take the YMCA, and and that night, a couple of people stood up and were very upset. Because their kids went to the YMCA daycare. And now they they gotta find another place to put their kids in because they moved into the community so they could use the YMCA. And the YMCA closed up. So to your point, which is a really cute one, I said to them, so and it's on the recording, I said, let me see if I understand this correctly. We paid about $150,000 more than we should have for the bill. Got it. We're probably going to wind up paying the $7.5 million for the whole project when we get done. I got it. Okay? You have in the YMCA building, you're, you're putting in community rooms. And they've agreed as part of the sales contract that they will allow the YMCA to use the community rooms in order for them to run their programs. So I asked the question and I said, if we're allowing the YMCA to use our facilities, and it's a tax exempt property, and it's a tax exempt entity, nonprofit organization, why the hell don't they just give us the building for free? We'll let them use it after we renovate it, and it's a win win for the community. And the answer was, it's not the way we negotiated it. My answer is, thank you, I, I'll sit down now, okay? Which is fine. But it, it, the good news is, it took, what, four meetings at the planning board to get phase one approval. There was a lot of pushback, there was a lot of questions, a lot of stuff going on, okay? 
So we, we put down here the rug mill. So the rug mill development is going to be an interesting one. At one point, they actually had, had suggested and they actually showed on the diagram that they were shutting Bank Street down one way. Imagine trying to get through Heights Town with Bank Street one, one way. You couldn't get through the traffic downtown. It's just not going to work. When the bridge was closed for about a week for them to do the new water lines and sewer lines over there, it screwed the borough up something terrible. Even Larry commented on this is absurd. Okay? And my question was, across the street from these parallel or parking that they're going to allow, or, or uh, diagonal, excuse me, diagonal parking that we're going to allow, is the first aid squad. How the hell is the first aid squad supposed to get out of their building to respond to you in an emergency? And they were like, well, we think we've got that solved. I don't want to hear I think we got it solved. I want to hear it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. And the question then became, where do the volunteers park their vehicles in this community once you've built everything on the rugby? The first aid squad does not have any parking on the street for them to put their cars. The fire department, originally they were going to allocate 18 slots behind the building here for the fire department. There's 50 active members, <coughs> about 50 active members, and a major problem or catastrophe, they're coming in 40 of them, 45 of them, are going to come in and respond. What the hell do we want to park the cars? So I think there's a lot of questions we have to ask about it. Uh, we'll put the rug mill on there, and then what we'll do is we'll move forward with it, try to get some details, actual solid numbers and stuff for you. All right, what else? Hi. Hey, 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 hey. I love that young lady. Hi, thank you. Hi, I'm Pascal. This is my husband, Cody, and Hi, our son, Kai. We moved to Heistown about six years ago, going on seven years. Our uh, topic we'd like to add to the agenda is Dawes Park. We, it's supposed to park to us, but unfortunately it's not the cleanest, the neatest, so we end up uh, driving to the other park, which is a lot nicer. So we're wondering if maybe we can organize some kind of clean up something. <laughs> Just because a lot of the kids use it, especially because the housing is very, very cheap and neighborhood children. So if we could get, it doesn't have to be as spruced up as Grant Park, uh, Association. But um, we like to see it cleaned up a little bit and have some, some safety stuff on the floor, too, like the rubber mask and all that stuff. Uh, is, is that the one on, I, I apologize, <laughs> yes, is that the one on, on Academy Street yes. type deal yeah. behind Super. Thank you much. That's the one right behind what's going to be our new... Uh, the YMCA. Yes. The, the YMCA. YMCA. So the right 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 Look, one of the building. things that's positive about Town and always has been, here you go, uh, has has always been positive about Heightstown is volunteerism, honestly. So, but, so quite honestly, if there's an issue like that, that's what an open meeting like this is for. We don't need borough employees on a clock to go clean up and, and rake up and stuff like that. We can probably pick a day on a weekend and just say, hey, let's, let's come on down and let's just clean the darn park up. I remember years and years ago, when they were having a lot of problems, uh, there was a, a pastor from one of the churches that came in and was talking at a borough council meeting trying to get money for the basketball hoops and rehab the, the, the courts over there. And they were told point blank there was no money in the budget type stuff. So somebody stepped up and gave $5,000 to the project. And that's all they needed was volunteers help. And they, they clean the place up and they put the... I, I have another on. issue. I live right here on Franklin Street. Okay. You know, just, just one sure. second. Don't mind. And we got 20 minutes to go. And the last 10 minutes, if it's okay with you, we're just going to see if we can distill this list down to about four or five things to put over there. So that when we have the next meeting, we can start off with updates on the four or five. Okay. I live up here on Franklin Street, and I have a problem with the condition of the road. Route 33 up here is horrendous. And the way it goes up and down, I mean, it's 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 taking its toll on the basement of my house. You know what I mean? The the reality of 33, whether we like it or not, Mercer Street, Franklin Street, Ariana, 33 is a state highway. 
I know. I we have no jurisdiction over. We can't do a damn thing, with, even if we. Well, we want to have the part the the uh, uh, harvest fest. They're coming over tomorrow. Sorry. Hopefully, to fix the problem. Uh oh. Uh, Scott, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Scott was the mayor, two-term mayor for the borough years ago. Back in the 1800s. <laughs> um, I want to add something about the YMCA slash borough hall slash possible police station. And um, to me, it's unsettling and it's a, it's a, um, hanging over our heads, but I don't like it. And that, and I'm pointing to the lack of transparency in this question, and that is for almost a year, the Borough of Pikestown has had an agreement with the Township of Robbinsville to build a new police station in Robbinsville, six miles from here. And I think it's unforgivable. I think it's oh, it's outside the realm of possibil possibilities that exist. To have a viable town like we have and a police station, but we got a police station six miles from here, that's not having a town that works. Um, so if this sounds confusing, yes, we are dangling at two different ends this concept of police station. On one end, Robbinsville thinks we're building it with them. And on another end, we have the possibility of adding it to the YMCA project in Heightstown. And nobody knows where it really is because everything is in closed session. It doesn't have to be in closed session. That's my layman's legal opinion. It only has to go to closed session when somebody's negotiating for the final price. But whether it's a good idea or a bad idea to have it in Robbinsville or here or in Heightstown, um, I thought that was supposed to be up to us. And there's my lack of transparency question. And it's not going to be resolved tonight. I just would like to see on that board. Transparency? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Um, originally, when talked about purchasing the YMCA. The police department was supposed to be built into that complex. Now, before the YMCA discussion started, yes, they were talking to Robbinsville. So it was brought up at several council meetings. Well, if we are now going to buy the YMCA, you're going to stop the discussions with Robbinsville and we keep our police department. And the borough council said, no, we're still we're still negotiating with Robin's number, which to me makes absolutely no sense. Well, we, we, we fought this battle what eight years ago or something like that when they wanted to outsource the police department and the and the borough just the residents just got upset and said we want a police department and we fought it and they Yeah, well, yeah we need a courthouse. Why should we have to go seven you get a parking ticket, why shouldn't you have to go seven miles to pay a parking ticket? I'm, I'm because the building next door well, I know, is not I know. safe. I know, I've been here. I've the been only here. building in the entire damn I watched the wash area. away, okay? I lived right up the street. I came the down and I watched the wash away. Is the I was right here. Floor. Matter of fact, I was right in front on the other corner watching it. For those of you who weren't here when the hurricane hit, the building we're standing in right now had four and a half to six feet of flowing water blowing through the fire station. They had got just enough time to get the equipment to hell out of before it flooded. And the reason I say four and a half to six feet is because on the back side there's a drop down, is that correct, Carl? And it just traveled through, okay? But within three weeks of the hurricane, the, the volunteer fire department had ripped out the sheetrock and, and ripped out the, the rooms downstairs and the bathrooms and well, had, had redone the, the whole thing. Tree. Absolutely. The, 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 the only place that didn't come back online was the Borough Hall. And that was that was for reasons. They, they I don't know why, because most of that building is concrete. They wanted to buy the Lucas building and that's the way of doing it. Okay. There's only yeah, one there's only two walls in that whole building. I, how would that there's only two walls in that whole building if you don't want. It, 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 the, we don't 
All right, we don't really know. Uh, and, and listen, uh, I, I mentioned up front, I'm the Republican mayoral candidate uh, because I was drafted. Okay, that's fine, I don't mind doing it. But I've been doing open public meetings like this on my own nickel for years. And I've basically been saying, we need to find out what, what's going on. We need to have open discussion about what's going on. And it's important that we do have these discussions and come up with solutions. It's your time, and I seriously believe, and, and once again, the turnout that we have, it is low because it's August, it's vacation, it's the middle of the week, whatever. I got it, I really don't care. We're gonna have another one, and we're gonna to try to pick up where we left off on this. But before I do, before I move on to the last part, because Milton wants to wrap it up, he promised eight o'clock, <laughs> we'd be done. Uh, did you find tonight, to be, what, what, before you walk out the door, did you vote for us? One way or the other, did you find tonight to be of any value to you? Raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Would you consider attending another one of these a couple weeks from now once we have more information for you? Okay, cool. Once again, I don't mind paying for these things. I don't mind setting them up. The fire department is awesome for us. And, and to me, the goal is transparency, is get the information out. So, that, I mean, how many of you knew before you walked in here that bridge is a half million dollar price tag? Two, 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 uh, you attend all the meetings, so that's not fair. A few regular people did, okay? Which is good. I'm glad some people are, are keeping an eye on the concept. What we like to do now, so we can wrap this up. Do you have a question? Yeah, no, you're holding on, please. Ah. You guys are wrapped. No, 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 go, go ahead. Well, uh, my name is Jordan Adler. Uh, it's funny how, and ironic how everything tied together. I was a little hesitant to come. I'm not sure what the, the forum was going to be like, so I appreciate you hosting that. And everything ties together. It's a town where there's a vision, where they want to get. Like a bridge, they're not quite getting there. They want to be a downtown, uh, so I can respect the businessman wanting a safe area by his business, a family man wanting to go to a park, yeah. and it's not one individual, it's a group of individuals, of course. Um, I'm not blaming, I'm just saying the reality is if someone wants to know, when you go to the park, there's a guy passed out on a bench, or you're sitting by the library by the lake, and there's a guy shooting up heroin, passed out on the ground, you know, it's there, we can't ignore the problem. And I, and, and I don't think arresting is the answer, I think, Dispersing and not allowing is the complete solution, but the community has to get involved. As it, Scott said, you're right. It's a quality of life issue. Yeah, is Rudy a, Giuliani took back 42nd Street, Times yeah. Square in New York by basically saying it's a quality of life issue. We will not allow them to shoot drugs on the streets, urinate in public. We won't allow that stuff. And if you start that, you clean the place up, then look what you got done in Times Square. Yeah, now. That's all back. Uh, well, I uh, moved that to California now. <laughs> well, here we go. I mean, I'll save a lot of the comments for the next time, but I think the borough's biggest issue is, I won't say safety, because there's, there's not a heck of a lot of crime if you read the police squatters and these <coughs> things. Marijuana and DUIs, that's about it. I, I, um, my, my big problem with it, from a safety standpoint, if I can yeah. be perfectly blunt in my yeah. last comment on safety, is the, the refusal to acknowledge the existence of a drug problem in the borough. And, and I say that because the high school is in the borough. And if you look at the number of kids who have died in East Windsor and Heightstown area over the last five years from, from drugs, Heroin you, over, don't you, you don't. can't ignore it. The, the council said there is no drug problem. And, and a teacher came before him and said, let's put a task force together and educate people and let's, let's do something about it. And they <coughs> definitively said, no drug problem, we're not even going to acknowledge it. And unfortunately, a couple of months later, one of the council members' child od and died, okay? Horrendous. But the council has voted funding to put drug kits in the police cars so they can respond to overdoses. Now, why the hell do we need the equipment and the drugs and the training if we don't have a problem. So you can't say it's not there, but we're going to provide for it anyhow. So to me, it, it's the concept of tunnel vision. I don't want to see what's out here. I just want to look here. 
And I think as a community, we need to, to decide what you want for a community and you want to move on. Please finish. Yes, I'll just wrap up if you have more of these forums. I think to, the problem has increased over the past four months. A lot of people have seen it, whether on the outskirts of town or downtown. And again, I, I respect or understand and sympathize people going through problems, but they can't impact regular Joe walking down the street. It's your child, your husband, your wife, your sibling. Yeah, you might feel a little differently at the moment. But if I'm going to the park or Scott's welcoming a customer into a store, he doesn't need to see this. No one does. So I would, you know, I would really think part of the solution to the problem would be to have a better increased uh, police presence consistently downtown by the park. We um, talked about it. We had that years years ago. They did it two years ago, and I got a ticket frequenting a shop in, in downtown Heightstown for parking by a bus. Meanwhile, the taxis, poor taxis are in their spots, and the cop and I kind of had the discussion. Yeah, and then I said, this is crazy. I'm going to a store I would never go to, but I figured, hey, let me give some money to the community. It's raining, I got two kids. So it comes and goes. To consistently maintain that, there needs to be a presence. I'm not saying arrest, I'm saying push down, and eventually, Someone in the community, one of these nonprofits, can help out. Awesome. That's all I have. Uh, so what we're going to do is just go one more time through here. If you don't mind. What I'd like to do is just put a check mark on the big ticket items. Remember, we can only do about four. So uh, I need you to vote taxes. Is that one of the big four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Every time. How about pay? Is that one of the big four? Well, the tax area. How about the downtown bridge? It's a done deal. Monday, we're not going there. We don't. Well, Monday, we're approving it. Uh, Monday, we're approving it. I'm sorry. I, 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 I think we probably need a little more information. Yeah, but you no. are correct. They're going, to dip. They're going to sign the contract come Monday. That's the way it works. They go into an executive session, and they say, we're going to do this. They come out in the public session. Anybody have a comment? You comment on it, and then they say, "Okay, we're going to vote on it, and we're going to we're going to pass whatever." <laughs> and it's going to pass. I got news. For okay. You. How about? Uh, I'll put twenty uh, on it that it passes. Can I ask a question about that? Please, sure. If the money to pay for the bridge is through grants that can't be reallocated, then what would our proposal be? It's either we take the money or we don't, right? Or is there some other proposal to try to move the money? Here, first of all, we can't touch the money. Okay. Oh, well, let me rephrase. We two hundred and six thousand dollars was allocated five years ago by the borough council for this bridge. Larry just said that he's talking four hundred eighteen thousand. I don't know where the two hundred and six thousand that's already been voted on by a prior council fits into that number, but I think we should take a look at it. Maybe part of that is our taxpayer money from the borough. That's our concern. That's item number one. Item number two is, assume somebody else walked in and said, we're gonna pay for the bridge for free. It's yours for free. Aesthetically, I think you need to go to the meeting on Monday and look at the drawings and say, we only have so much footage of use in the borough. And if the ramps for the ADA are taking over half of the, the park or the green area in front of Memorial Library, are you willing to sacrifice half that property to put the darn bridge in? And the same thing on the other side. It's gotta have two sides to it. Well, so that's why I like to look and see what these proposals th are. There you go. Yeah. And, and you gotta go take a look at it. And aesthetically, you know, as a citizen, you have the right to stand up and say, I don't care who the hell's money it is. I think it's a boondoggle, and I think it's a waste of money, and I don't think we should be doing it. So I, as a resident, I vote leave the damn bridge down until we come up with a better game plan, because I don't think we should spend a half a million dollars and lose all that green area. Because my question is going to be in the Harvest Fair, where the hell do you put people? Because you put them on those green areas right now for the Harvest Fair. And if you don't have them, where are you going to put them? The parking lot? So the fare is going to be cut down by 25%. The underground bridge. Yeah, JP was at uh, $400,000 that's coming from the federal government to cover the construction of the bridge. It 
is about a quarter million dollars that we've already spent and invested in the bridge in engineering fees and legal fees to, to get to this point. So you've got actually $650,000 which is going to be invested in this. So we've already invested. We have about a quarter million dollars already spent. That's our taxpayer money. Habitat for Humanity on, on a, a Cavendish Street is trying to finish two houses out there. You could you could throw them on the grand and get those two houses taken care of. You know what I mean? You could build a palace for $8 million. I could also mention that um, after it is built, assuming it's built, to be done correctly will probably cost Easily tens of thousands of dollars annually to maintain security. That park is off limits after 8 o'clock p.m. Once it's 8 o'clock, boom. Or earlier if it's darker earlier. And I can understand why. You don't want a congregation of people hanging out and using the bridge as, your, as their activity for the night. I have seen people in the, what do you call that, the basin? I have seen people in the basin. I have seen them fished out. I've seen people from up top jump in to save them. And I don't trust this town, to tell you the truth. And I know how I sound. I know how I sound, because I have good reason to sound this way. I just don't trust this town to monitor the security and the safety of that whole bridge area. I have asked for years that life preservers be put back, mounted on the side of the structure. Well, there used to have around. Life insurance. There yeah. used to be life preservers They're on there. Around. Yeah. Our insurance company says there should be life preservers there, but this town will not put life preservers there. A simple thing like life preservers that a I'm person would put there. signs that please don't litter over there. They got two little signs so, about this big. I'm so just saying. theoretically, the police should be monitoring it through the night, every night from now on, as soon as the bridge is built. Well, uh, once again, we'll, what I'd like to do is, is even though even though they're going to sign a contract on Monday for four hundred eighteen thousand dollars, I think it would be worthwhile for the community to know what the actual hidden cost or total value or, or impact cost of that bridge. So it's four hundred eighteen thousand from this point going forward. Great. What did we spend up to this point? What are we going to have to spend going back? I, I have projected. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. I have projected that that's a million dollar white elephant. And I think when we get done adding all of the numbers together, I think it's going to come in as a million dollar bid. Well, I was here a year ago, and they still, when I was here a year ago, they were setting up people to figure out how much they had spent, spent already, because nobody knew. No. Do, they, do we know now? No. And, and I'll tell you one of the reasons we don't know is because they, in my opinion, deliberately misclassify the, the allocation. So you see legal fee, but you don't see, unless you can go back to the actual bill right. and see what the attorney billed for and what the line item was. And a lot of times it just says redacted because it's confidential information for five years. You're not going to find it. But we'll pursue it. We'll pursue what we can get for you. My concern basically is uh, an opportunity for the community to get together, ask questions, come up with solutions, and, and, and improve the process going forward. <coughs> I can assure you at the next meeting it'll be probably close to 100 people. And the reason I can assure you that is because we didn't get our signage up this time. We didn't get a lot of people. Normally, at least 60 people from Enchantment show up because they're concerned. <laughs> I want to give it to you. Have to keep the Hike Sound Gazette going. Well, Hike Sound Gazette, yeah, I, I hear. We'll, we'll see what we can do on that one. Uh, but we have long signs to get people's attention and let them know about it. Uh, the last time we did it in 2014, the borough actually challenged it. And the borough put on their website, this is not an official meeting. We don't suggest you go to it. That was like, it's a damn open meeting for residents to talk about ideas and solutions. Why would you not want people to come to the next meeting, we would include, um, I know it's not, not on your report, but just the, um, the sidewalks, curbing, and infrastructure of downtown? The whole town. Yeah. 
because the sign. Okay, uh, how about you just move that over? Uh, oh, you go up here by Brown County. Yeah, right for me here right by North Main Street. There, there, are there, are there are none. There are no sidewalks over there. And Where? But right down from the Catholic Church. And even the even the sidewalks oh, that we have in our public parks. Yeah, there's. Here's part of the problem. Love, there's no sidewalks yeah. either on Here's here's part of the problem. And that is, this was a farming community. The downtown area of Hikestown was really declined downtown. Very, and then what happened was it grew. I lived here then. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? I, I, lived I lived there. I'm constantly yeah. being yelled at because they want to put a sidewalk in front of my house. Okay, I'm on North Main Street. I'm the last house on North Main Street. That's my goal up. I have 209 foot of frontage on North Main Street. I really don't look forward <laughs> to, to 209 <laughs> feet of a sidewalk I am now legally responsible yeah, to, shovel. Shovel. to shovel. I live up to, the street here. I don't to I shovel it when it snows. To, to maintain and the rest of this, yeah. okay? And, and the reason for it is when I bought the house, it was the last house in the borough, and the building next to me was was a nurse was a nursing home right, and that did not have a sidewalk either. Okay. On the other side, which is the east side of North Main Street, there was sidewalks going all the way up. So the point I made was somebody wants a sidewalk, walk on on the east side of the road. So it's there. Why do I have to put a <coughs> sidewalk on and then when you get to the end of my property, it's East Windsor. I'm on the border with East Windsor. There is Stonebrook or whatever it is is, is nesting. There is no sidewalk there. They came, wanted to put a grant in to get DOT money to put the sidewalk up there. They said, Janice, we'd like you to join us to get the DOT funding for it. And Janice said, I don't want a sidewalk there. So my point basically was, East Windsor doesn't want a sidewalk. Why the hell are you making me put a 209 foot sidewalk in front of my house and have a legal liability? Let them walk on the east side of the road and let them, it's got a sidewalk, what can I tell you? I, well, I, would, I would rather see just a normal budgeted line item each year in the municipal budget just for repairing. Years ago they had that. Sidewalks. Years ago that was in the budget. It was sidewalk repair and things like that. Went in. The Parks and Recreation Department had a nice budget years ago. The, what she's talking about wouldn't have, wouldn't have been an issue five years ago. It is an issue now. And in case you haven't looked at your new tax bill, it's going up <laughs> from the municipal side. Yep. The percentage of your tax bill that goes for municipal tax is, is going up. Yeah. And it went up. Yeah, it, it's, well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're not, ta we're, we're not we're talking not. politics, but I'm going to well, tell I, you, I we're going to have on a website that you can go a lot of graphs that you're going to sit there and go, wow, okay, wow. Okay, so great. We're moving taxes over to there. We're moving pennies over there. And, and can, does anybody have a problem if I change from petty to tax exempt? No, we no. should do that. Should be By the way, the same. for those tax of you, exempt. don't call it petty. Uh, for those of you who were appreciative of it, uh, the headmaster of the petty school was here tonight, and um, it is a broader issue. Was that the gentleman over here? Yes, it is. Why didn't you introduce him? Well, I didn't think he was going to leave earlier, and I was going to introduce him. Okay. And uh, I, I'm sorry. I hope he comes back again. But um, I don't think so. Histor <laughs> <laughs> Historically, Petty has uh, been a big part of Heightstown, even on boards and commissions. And um, honestly, it's tough for Petty. Wait a minute to make a bigger contribution, they think it's tougher. The courts side with them. Number two, they don't, they're not obligated to pay taxes. And three, they have every private school, every college, and every hospital in the state of New Jersey to answer to if they pay us a bigger contribution because they'd be setting the precedent for everybody. Um, nevertheless, good communication with them we have not had in a long time. And secondly, and last thing, I'll shut up. The bigger problem is the public school system's presence in high And JP alluded to that or specifically said it several times. Half of the schools in the school system are in Heightstown. Half of the classrooms are in Heightstown. But we only have 13% of the students. 
During the daytime, it's possible there are more people in Heightstown from East Windsor than there are Heightstonians in the borough. And so we are giving up our tax exempt property. About 10% of our property is tax exempt. We're giving up most of it to East Windsor. And that's called subsidizing East Windsor. It can be shown on paper. I'm not going to win the case right now. Okay. We'll pick it up at the next meeting. So we're going to move over taxes. I don't like to say petty. So when you talk to the headmaster, you can tell them we're just talking tax exempt. Okay? Uh, we're going to talk about the rug mill. We're going to talk about the YMCA. And we're going to talk about transparency. Is that five that we can get away with? Because we really you can't transfer a dozen over. Oh, the homeless person or the drug problem? Oh, the drug problem. Okay. All in favor of putting a sixth one on, raise your hand. Okay, just put a sixth one on. Drug. Drug problem. All right. Drug and alcohol. The non existing drug problem? Substance. The non acknowledged drug problem. The non acknowledged drug problem. There you go. The, the, the invisible drug problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's substance concern. abuse. Yes. Like drugs? JP. Uh, or okay. drugs. Uh, it's substance abuse. <coughs> How about we just call it reality of drug problem question mark? Why don't you do safety and put everything that encompasses all those issues under the infrastructure, uh, drug yeah. abuse? <laughs> because we won't get the next yeah, meeting off the corner. But at least it acknowledges it. All right, we'll just put safety down, please. And underneath safety. it, you can put drug, drugs. You can put side Drugs and homeless. homeless. <laughs> okay, homeless. Okay. Not all <coughs> okay. Okay. We'll, we'll add all the subs. I want to thank you all for taking your time tonight. I know it's it's a pain in the middle of the week. I actually flew back from North Carolina uh, today so I could be here for the for this presentation tonight of ideas from the community. Once again, I, I thank you very much for. We thank you for. And Jeannie and Milton and I will be around trying to help Carl a little bit to put the uh, chairs up. Uh, Mitch, where will we be uploading? There's going to be a website, by the way, called myheightstown.org, which should be up in a week or so. So all these meetings, the, the planning board, the, the council meeting on Monday, all those will be on that website. It's myheightstown.org. You can just pull them down and, and review it and see if you missed something or whether you misunderstood something. It's, on, it's in color on your screen, okay? Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you much. Thank you. Thank you.